Welcome to my course, Game Development Basics, Week 4, Lesson 3, Event Dispatchers. In this lesson, we'll explain the purpose of an event dispatcher, and then we'll demonstrate the implementation of an event dispatcher. In the last lesson, we set up our BP circuit breaker, and in here, we're using an interface so that when we interact with the circuit breaker, we're flipping it from on to off but we also want this to affect several actors in our level. And an event dispatcher is a perfect way to implement this behavior. An event dispatcher allows a blueprint class to dispatch an event or call it. And then we can set up other actors to listen for the event or bind to that event and then trigger its own event when the call is received. Now, this has several benefits, but one of the biggest benefits is that it's a one-way communication, meaning the dispatching class does not need to know whether the message was received. It sends out the message or calls it, and then any other listening actors can perform their functionality independently of the actor that is calling the event. And this is very useful when multiple classes need to be aware of an event and then fire their own independent functionality. And this is a quick diagram of how it all works. We have listening actors that bind an event dispatcher to their own custom event. And we can see each listening actor can have its own implementation based upon this event dispatcher. Then when our dispatching actor calls the event, each of the independent events will then be triggered. Let's create some implementation in our game so we can see how this all works. Here I am in my BP circuit breaker, and down at the bottom of the My Blueprints, you'll see Event Dispatchers. Let's hit the plus and we'll create a new one. And we'll call this Flip Breaker Off. And here in our Interact interface, if the breaker is on, we're gonna call this top branch. So we can drag this into here and then select Call. And we'll see that there's a node that says call flip breaker off with a little envelope. And the first thing we want is when the breaker is tripped, we want our gate to unlock. So let's create a new custom event and call this unlock gate. And here off of event begin play, let's get actor. And we'll select the circuit breaker and then from the circuit breaker here, let's drag off and type flip breaker. And we'll see there's one that says bind event to flip breaker off. Let's select this one. And we'll notice that in the bottom, there's this little red square. And it's the same as this red square here. And if we hover over it, it says output delegate. We can connect these. And now on begin play, we're gonna get our circuit breaker actor. We're gonna bind an event to the circuit breaker off and we want the event to be unlock gate. Now, whenever this event is called from the circuit breaker, this unlock gate event will be triggered. To test this, let's drag off here and use a print string. And let's just type gate unlocked. And the second thing I wanna do is when we flip the breaker, we want our door to our house to become locked. So let's do the same thing here. We'll get actor and we want our circuit breaker. We want to bind event to flip circuit breaker off. And then we want to create a custom event called lock door. In here, let's do another print string that says door is locked. Let's compile and test this out. Now when I flip my breaker, I should see two events print to the screen, one from the gate and one from the door. And there we can see gate unlocked and door is locked. So we can see the flexibility of this that we can have one event trigger multiple events on different actors. And this will add a lot of flexibility to our code and ensure that we don't have situations where things are tightly coupled together, meaning if we change one thing, we have to go back and change a bunch of other things. We can set up these event dispatchers in a way that if we need to change one of the actors, we don't need to go back and change all the rest. So here's a little mini challenge. 
I want to actually create a situation where when we lock this door, it will actually be locked and the player will not be able to open it. And just as a quick note, if you have a house that has multiple entrances like this one where I have one door over here and one door over here, you're gonna need multiple doors in order to effectively lock the player in. If you wanna to attempt to do this challenge on your own, pause the video now, otherwise I'll show you how I would do it. In my door actor, the first thing I want is a locked Boolean. And right here before we check if the door is moving, I wanna check if the door is locked. Let's create a second door and put it into our other doorway. And I also want to take my breaker and move it inside the house. And I think it would be fun to have it upstairs so the player has to go up the stairs in order to trip the breaker. And I think it would be great to have it over here on this wall. And make sure just so you don't confuse yourself that the Boolean should match whatever the true or false condition is here. So I say is door locked and then true will open it. So we can either change this to say door unlocked or move this to the false pin. And then here on lock door, we can just set is door locked to true. When this event is triggered, we'll set the door is locked to true, which means that the event will no longer be triggered. And to test this out, I'll go up to my door and I'm able to open it. And now here at my breaker, I can press E to interact and now the doors are locked, so I can't open them. But I did notice that if you don't shut the door behind you, you can very easily get out. So I definitely wanna put something in here that would close the doors as well. And luckily, we already have a closed door event. So here, right after we lock the door, we can just call the closed door event. And we can see that even if we leave the door open, It will close automatically when we trip that breaker. As one final challenge, I also want to turn off all the lights in the house when we trip the breaker. So I'll copy these two from the gate and then here in BP light, I'll just paste them in and create a new custom event called turn off lights. And we'll bind that event to the flip breaker off event and this can be just as easy as taking our rectangle light and set visibility to false. Now when I flip the breaker and I go back downstairs, the lights are now out. I can probably also set the visibility to false on these light bulbs. And here's one final challenge for this video. I only want to turn off the lights that are in this house when this breaker is tripped. So I want to create one additional check in that the lights would be linked to that specific breaker. So we could have multiple breakers that are all linked to different lights. And this would allow us to set up different functionality if we wanted to have another breaker in this house that controlled the lights on this house. So only the lights on the house that the breaker is in would be affected by that circuit breaker. If you want to attempt to implement this on your own, you can pause the video now. Otherwise, I'll show you how I would do it. My implementation is probably a little bit crude, but I do think it's also the easiest way to implement this functionality. Here in my circuit breaker, I'm gonna create a new variable. And this is gonna be an integer variable. And I'm gonna call this breaker number. And one thing we want for this is to make sure that this is instance editable. And let's compile. Now here in my BP light, I also want to create a variable called light number. And this should also be an integer. And this should also be instance editable. And if we select one of the lights in our level, we can see that light number here. We can change the ones in house one to say one. And we can change the breaker in house one 
to also be one. Now here in our light, where we're binding to this event, we wanna get all of the actors of this class. So let's delete this. Let's type get all actors of class. And this should be BP circuit breaker. And we'll notice the output of this is an array. Let's give ourselves a little bit more space here and we'll do a for each loop. And for each breaker, we want to get that breaker number. And if the breaker number is equal to the light number, then we can bind to the current element in the array. And if it's not, we'll do nothing. Now, as I said, this implementation is a little bit crude, and if you're not careful, you can very easily create some bugs for yourself. One potential bug, for instance, is that you need to make sure that you really check that the breaker numbers aren't duplicated in your level. If you have multiple breakers with the same number, you're gonna run into a situation where it's gonna get all of them and it's gonna go through each one and it's gonna to bind to one of them. And then when it gets to the next one with the same number, it'll bind to that one as well. And there's no real way to say which one will come first. So you may create a bug for yourself unintentionally. So if you're gonna use this implementation, just make sure that your breaker numbers are all unique. Let's also do the same thing for our gate. So now the gate is also linked to breaker number one. And just for testing, I've added another breaker to my level and I've called it breaker one. So when I flip this breaker, the door should not open and the gate should not open. And we can see here that nothing's happening. The gate did not trigger its event and the door is still unlocked. Interfaces and event dispatchers will definitely give you the flexibility that you need to make a game like this. So now that we have all these tools that we can use, I think it's a good time to take a break from working on our game and stop to think through how we want the flow of our level to work. So in the next lesson, we're going to define the game loop for our project.